So hello everyone, welcome to this week's YouTube video. I'm Mike Ingledew. If you are new here, I'm all about making you successful with your integrated product support strategies. Uh, whether that's identifying the correct and appropriate standards and specifications for your organization, whether you are trying or looking for software to support your project, or whether you're just developing your skills and knowledge. This week, we're definitely gonna be talking a little bit about skills and knowledge. And I'm going to look at two questions that we get asked here all of the time. And uh, the first question that we get asked all of the time is why bother with something like S1000D? What do we get? What do we gain? And, uh, you know, where is the ROI? And the second one is what are the alternatives, Mike? Are there alternatives? And yes, there are alternatives. So the first thing about uh, S1000D is we are running online next week our Understanding XML and S1000D training course. And if you're a TDW Plus Premium member, you can join us for free on that course. Uh, but if you want to join that course, I'll put a link down below and uh, up on the screen next to me that you can join that course. And we go through everything from what do we mean by structured languages and how and why do we use them in modern technical documentation. And then we move into the history of S1000D and why S1000D does things in a certain way. And why does S1000D actually exist? And then we move into the mechanics and the foundations of S1000D. What do we have to get right and why we have to do certain things in a certain way for us to actually uh, get the maximum and the benefit out of S1000D. We look at the role of software, we look at uh, where the ROI is, the return on investment, and we look at some of the real life practical things that projects get wrong and that how we can avoid them. So if you are new to S1000D or you are considering adopting S1000D, this is the course for you. And you can then learn a little bit about why S1000D does what it does and why it does what it does and how we can get it to actually sing for us and for our projects. We'll look at everything from the data modules themselves, the role of the DMRL. We'll even throw in some real life examples of the size and scale of DMRLs on real projects. And we'll then move into business rules. How do we work with the things like Brex? And what are the, what is it the supply chain will look from us if we're up in the supply chain? Or what are the questions the supply chain should be asking our customers if we're being asked to deliver S1000D? So I'm delivering this one for our Australian counterparts. So we have our Australian customers and um, members down, uh, down under. So I am getting up super early to run this one daily sessions of between one to two hours a day, Monday to Friday next week. And uh, looking forward to that. If anybody else has done any of my online training courses, you know, I like to have a little bit of fun. So we turn it into a little bit of a, a little bit of a, a mix and match of uh, a little bit of music before we start. And, uh, and then we crack on with learning a little bit about S1000D. A second question that I get, and I'll generally get this during my S1000D training as well, is what are the alternatives? Now this one we have made available completely free of charge. For those of you who have not seen it yet, over the last three weeks, we have been running an alternatives to S1000D training course. And I've been looking at some of the commercial off the shelf tools that I use that help me create good quality technical documents, as well as things like my training handouts and praises and those kind of things. And uh, I show you the tools that I use. Then we uh, look at the mechanics of a good modern technical document. What are the business requirements? What are the end user requirements? And what is the formula for a good technical document and then we move into looking at something that I use here a lot which is something called Adobe RoboHelp and we look at how RoboHelp helps us uh, structure a good quality uh, technical document that we can then take out to multiple media whether we're going to go out to chatbots whether we go to word to pdf to an ietp and uh, everything in between we look at all of those so then we look at how robo help helps us manage and configure a technical document and then we go through how 
you can publish that to lots of different medium. And I go through uh, examples of technical documents that have been published to mobile apps, and I pull up a screen that shows you some of the uh, real examples that are on the, uh, the app stores. And I talk you through the process that I go through creating mobile apps. So that is actually uh, available free of charge. You can watch that now. It's just shy of three hours long and uh, you can watch all three sessions now on our website. So do go and create an account and you can watch that uh, from my perspective on how we can create affordable technical documents using things like Adobe Robo Help. We had lots of great questions in there and um, some questions came in like, can we compare S1000D to Robo Help? And there are some comparisons that we can draw and I do draw those. And um, can we uh, say the things that Robo Help does that a CSDB doesn't do and vice versa? So. Do enjoy that and um, I'd be interested to learn from you guys what you are using. I've, I, I talk briefly about things like InDesign and these kind of tools that I use as well. So, uh, but again, go and watch that for free on our website. If you are interested in joining our Understanding XML and S1000D training course next week, do get in touch with us and um, looking forward to delivering that. And this week I'm actually out on the road, which is why it's a short, sharp uh, video. I am actually going to a museum this week, uh, which does have, I understand, an aircraft that I actually used to service uh, as part of an exhibit. So if you are not subscribed, make sure you do subscribe because we've started doing YouTube shorts, which are the new kind of Instagram type uh, capabilities from YouTube. And I'm going to try and do a YouTube short from there so, and uh, show you the aircraft itself. Uh, but what we do know is that whilst we smashed through 20,000 views on our website, on our, our YouTube uh, channel last week, that over 60% of you that watch our content are not actually subscribed. So please do subscribe because it will help us grow this community, this channel. And if you subscribe, it shows me and tells me that you're actually liking and enjoying what we're doing here at TDW. That's it. And if you want any more information, do do get in touch with us. Uh, the, the link to the free account will be down below. So um, yeah, create your account, enjoy that. And I'd get, love to hear your feedback on whether RoboHelp is something that you think you could use inside your organization. I'm Mike Inglejew. Stay safe, stay well, and um, speak to you on the next one.